This is part six of a series on artificial neural network. In this video, we will look at multi-class classification. This video was produced in Korean and translated into English. My voice was generated by AI text-to-speech. In the last video, we wrote codes to perform binary classification using numerical differentiation and gradient descent. In this video, we will write a code that performs multi-class classification. If there are more than two classes, such as when y is 0, 1, or 2, it is called multi-class classification. In the data below, there are two features X and a target Y. Target Y has three classes, 0, 1, and 2. N is the number of data points. And C is the number of classes. In multi-class classification, the target Y is converted to a one-hot encoding like this. These are what we want to output from a neural network. For these to be output, three neurons are needed in the output layer of the neural network. Each neuron outputs each element of a one-hot encoding. The first neuron outputs the first element of one-hot encoding. And the second neuron outputs the second element and the third neuron outputs the third element. These are the indices of the neurons. The input layer and hidden layer are the same as those used when performing binary classification in the previous video. These are the desired outputs to be used in the training process. The one-hot encoding for y equal to zero is one zero zero. This means activating the first neuron and inhibiting the others. That is, if only the first neuron is activated, the class Y of the input data is zero. And this is the output vector from the neural network during the prediction process. The output layer uses the softmax activation function. It converts the output vector from the neural network into a probability distribution like this. If the first neuron has the largest activation level like this, the class of the input data point is predicted to be zero. That is, the class of the input data point is predicted as the index number of the neuron with the largest output value. You can easily find this by taking argmax over the output vector of the neurons. In this case, argmax of y hat is zero. Next, let's look at the loss function and activation function for multi-class classification. The cross entropy loss is used for multi-class classification. Cross entropy was explored in detail in the second video of this series. To be precise, the average of cross entropy is used as the loss. This is the cross entropy, and this is the average. This formula is for batch gradient descent. N is the number of data points and C is the number of classes. If you use mini-batch gradient descent, it becomes this equation, where K is the number of data points in one subset. For example, if Y and Y hat are like this, the cross entropy for this data point is calculated as follows. If there are two classes, Y0 and 1, the above equation can be written as follows. This is the binary cross entropy. Therefore, 
the cross entropy is a more general expression. Next, let's look at the softmax activation function. For multi-class classification, a softmax activation function is used in the output layer. Again, the softmax function transforms the output vector of the neural network into a probability distribution. The formula is as follows. Calculating the natural constant, e to the power of the output value of each neuron, z, and normalizing it. The denominator is the normalization constant. Then the sum of y hat becomes 1. For example, if vector z is like this, then the y hat is like this. This is a probability distribution. That is, the probability that the class of the input data is 0 is 0 0.23. and the probability that the class is 1 is 0 0.42. And the probability that the class is 2 is 0 0.36. We predict that the class of the input data point is 1 because the class is most likely to be 1. If we take argmax for y hat, it's 1. However, if the z value is too large, Overflow may occur in the numerator or denominator. For example, if zi, the output of a neuron i, is 30, e to the power of 30 is a whopping 10 to the power of 13. You can avoid this problem by modifying the softmax formula as shown below. Multiply both sides of the numerator and denominator by an arbitrary constant a. Then we can write it as follows. Since log a is also a constant, it can be written as negative a prime. Defining a prime as the largest value of the z vector, we can write the softmax formula as follows. The results are identical to those of the equation above. This formula allows you to safely calculate the softmax values. In this way, you can easily implement multi-class classification by using the cross-entropy loss and the softmax activation function. In machine learning, support vector machine and logistic regression are natively binary classification algorithms. In order to perform multi-class classification, additional tasks such as 1 vs 1 or 1 vs rest were required. This increases the computational burden and takes a long time to train. However, artificial neural network is basically capable of not only binary classification, but also multi-class classification. No additional tasks are required. Moreover, the same goes for regression. You only need to change the loss function and activation function of the output layer. This is one of the advantages of artificial neural network. Now, let's implement a neural network using numerical differentiation. Let's implement a two-layered perceptron like this to perform the multi-class classification. Let's use the gradient descent function we created on the previous video. As mentioned in the previous video, to calculate the gradient accurately, we need to use automatic differentiation. However, here we use numerical differentiation to approximate the gradient. We will take a closer look at gradient descent using automatic differentiation in the error backpropagation algorithm later. The data we will use is like this. This data is organized into three clusters like this. The class Y of the red cluster is zero. The class Y of the blue cluster is one and the class Y of the green cluster is 2. 
we want to use two decision boundaries like this to separate this data into three groups. N class is the number of classes. The N class of this data is three. We see the data visually. This is the result from this code. We one hot encode the class Y. We then split this data into training and test data. Now we create a two layered neural network model. The number of neurons in the input layer is the number of features in the training data. Here it is too. The number of neurons in the output layer is N class, which is the number of classes. Here it is three. The number of neurons in the hidden layer was set to 16. The learning rate alpha is set to 0 0.05. And H for numerical differentiation was set to 10 to the power of negative four. Next, we initialize the parameters. The connection weights WH between the input layer and the hidden layer is a two by 16 matrix. The bias BH is a 1 by 16 matrix. And the connection weights WO between the hidden layer and the output layer is a 16 by 3 matrix. The bias BO is a 1 by 3 matrix. The weight matrices WH and WO are randomly initialized. And the bias matrices BH and BO are initialized to 0. The parameter list contains these matrices. Next, we write a function that uses this formula to calculate the softmax activation function values. Since it is a multi-class classification model, the output layer uses a softmax activation function. Then, we write a function to calculate the value of the reU activation function used in the hidden layer. Write a function that calculates the loss value using this formula. Since it is a multi-class classification model, cross-entropy loss is used. Next, we write a function to calculate the output from this neural network. This is the prediction process. When you input data X into this neural network, the output is calculated using this formula. P0 is the matrix UBH. And P1 is the matrix BH. P is the matrix WO. And P3 is the matrix BO. If the proba variable is true, the probability distribution that is the output of softmax is returned. Otherwise, the value converted to the class is returned. Next, we write a function that performs the training process. Repeat the following process the given number of times. Input the training data X and the validation data X val into the current neural network and measure the loss. The parameters of the initial neural network are random values that have not yet been trained. Next, we iteratively update the parameters using mini-batch gradient descent. Create a subset of a given batch size. And perform the gradient descent on this subset. Then the parameters will be updated once. By repeating this process, the parameters are continuously updated. And the neural network is gradually trained. Now we call the train function. The number of iterations was set to 200. And the batch size was set to 50. Visually see the loss history measured during training. Then we measure the accuracy of the training and test data. Next, we visually check the decision boundaries. 
The following code is what we used in machine learning. Let's skip the explanation of the following code. And let's check the results. As the iteration progresses, you can see that the loss of the training and test data gradually decreases. Visualizing this, it looks like this. If you see the loss gradually decreasing, you can assume that the parameters have been updated to their optimal values. The accuracy of the training data was 0.95, and the accuracy of the test data was 0 0.90. The decision boundaries for multi-class classification looks like this. The decision boundary separating the red and blue data points is like this. And the decision boundary separating the blue and green data points is like this. As expected, two decision boundaries emerged. If a test data point is here, we assume it is class 0. Because it is to the left of this decision boundary. Let's run this code. The results came out like this. So far, we have looked at the cross-entropy loss function and the softmax function for multi-class classification. Created a two-layer neural network and written code to perform multi-class classification. In the next video, we will look at the regression problem.